everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'll introduce myself. I'm from Navy. Uh, my name is Raphael Shroff. Uh, small correction from Mr. Kensho. Uh, Kensho is the name of the solution and it's something that I work for, but my name is Raphael. Okay, uh, thank you very much for having me over here. Uh, what I thought I'll do today is uh, give you a different perspective on the convergence of um, science and art uh, from a career dimension. I know you've heard a lot of speakers before highlighting maybe certain aspects of it, but I'd like to take you on a journey in the next 10 minutes to help every one of you explore and discover yourself and also look at um, the new emerging opportunities where science and art meet um, and then think about the future as well. What does it mean for you? Uh, because each one of us is unique and each one of you will go on a different path but everything starts right here, right now in this institution and in this program. Um, so the name of my topic is Connecting the Dots. I know as young people, uh, especially in this day and age, we have access to a lot of information, isn't it? On our phones, we get a lot of free advice from parents and well wishers, friends influencing us, and it's very confusing and overwhelming, and we're not really sure what to do with all this. How does it make sense? How do I connect the dots? And how do I plan ahead? How do I find purpose based on my passion? Very, very daunting task. But we all need to do it somehow. And I hope in 10 minutes I can share some of my own experiences as well as experiences from the people I work with in India and Australia. Um, and then leave you with some advice on how you can do this for yourself uh, later on. Now before I go to the next um, part, this is a Rangoli. And I, I was inspired for this talk by this because we've been having Rangoli in front of our home every morning. There's a lot of science to it, though we Look at the visual appeal and the welcoming nature of it. But Rangoli was originally done to prevent insects from entering the house. And it was based on the powder that they used. You either fed the insect or it was a repellent. And then if you look, there's a lot of geometry in there. It's very visually appealing because it's symmetrical. There's a lot of geometry. So it, as I think the human race we have an innate nature in us to combine science and creativity um, from you know, you know, very, very long ago. And this is what I think we need to remember and continue as we go ahead in life. So my, in my journey, I was, when I grew up, um, I loved playing with Lego. So I like building things. So Lego was my favorite toy. I also like doing models. Uh, so I used to go to the India Hobby Center and pick up things and make models of planes, mostly. I also enjoyed uh, painting the universe using black chalk paper and spray painting it with a comb and a toothbrush. That's all I had. But you could create magic uh, just using that. So for me, Science and art was always together. I was also uh, a very uh, sporty person. I was involved in a lot of team sports um, and I enjoyed dancing. So that was me in school. And I'm sure a lot of you would be like me, uh, would share similar interests and passions. And growing up back then, I wasn't sure really what I wanted to do with who I was, based on my strengths, and based on things that I really cared about and what I really loved. Because in the 80s, we didn't have too many options. 
right? So I was logically intelligent and I did well in science and maths. So therefore, you know what I ended up doing. In class 11, I ended up doing science with maths. Uh, none of my other intelligences were taken into account. Um, and I'm not sure if that practice still continues. And admission into 11 and 12 is still based on the marks that you've got in your board exam in class 10, or do you actually consider your other passions and interests too? Question for you to think about. In my case, I was also inspired by people like uh, Da Vinci and Einstein. Now you may not know this, but uh, you may know Da Vinci as a great artist in the Renaissance period, you might have seen the Mona Lisa. But Da Vinci was uh, also a fabulous medical illustrator. He was a, one of the greatest inventors. His drawings of flying machines inspired uh, gliders, uh, the first version of a helicopter. It was all from his scientific illustrations. So, um, again, he's a fine example of uh, what happens when science and art meet. Einstein, we, we've all learned the theory of relativity in school, but did you know he was a very, very creative person? In fact, he said, imagination is more important than knowledge. Now, let's go move on to the world now. So, I believe as a human race, the number one problem that we're all faced with is climate change. Now, while a lot of people have emphasis on Industry 4.0, which is technology, innovation, automation, robotics, people are concerned whether robots will replace human beings. And what will happen to human beings if everything is automated? You know, what will be the value of the human? Where will you fit in? Um, and on the other side, we are facing extreme uh, weather extremities. There's floods, there's fire, tsunami. Um, so unless we have climate change and climate action and use technology to solve this problem, I think as a human race, we are going to become an endangered species. And so, my friends, I'd like you to think of climate change in whatever you do. Right now, it doesn't have to be a job that you enter a few years later, but simple actions, simple behavioral changes and adjustments that you can make at home, in school, in society, will help you uh, become advocates of climate action and you will do your part to help save the human race and the planet. So that's uh, again an intersection of um, science and art which is necessary uh, to solve a complex problem like that. So most of the careers in the future and currently, I think, will be in the green economy. So whether you are doing engineering and science uh, without art, you might become a sustainability engineer or a renewable energy engineer, so that could be an option. And uh, if you're, say, a humanity student, uh, you could be an environment and social governance compliance person or a, a consultant um, or somebody in uh, implementing uh, climate action for the government. You will find very interesting positions all over the world if you just investigate on LinkedIn, platform like that. Um, so whether you're a creative person, you have a scientific intuition or you're a person interested in business and say sustainable um, uh, logistics and supply chain. 
Um, so whatever be your interest or your skill set, I think you will all have to come under the umbrella of the careers in the green economy, which is a mix of both. Now I'll just quickly run through a few examples of careers that fascinate me as always, and I think these are things, if some of you are looking at being inventors, uh, you can think about it. A lot of my inventions have come from nature. So people have been inspired by animals, insects, birds. Did you know that the bullet train was actually inspired by the kingfisher? Uh, the design of it. You know, and that's why it can go much faster than any other train. And I know the bullet train is now going to be introduced in India as well. So can you imagine the jobs that's going to open up for people like product designers? where you need to have science and math and a little bit of creative thinking to get into a career like that. Um, so again, uh, an option for some of you. Uh, this one is one of the largest mega cities that is being built in Saudi Arabia. So it's called the Neon Project, it's about 100 miles long. Um, and this is like a biosphere, it's like an ecosystem uh, by itself and this is the biggest in the world. It's uh, zero carbon emitting, it's completely based on recycled um, products and renewable energy. So uh, can you imagine the type of careers that are available? just in a single project like this. So you need look, people with both scientific and creativity, as well as humanity students, business students. There's a place for everyone, even a single project like this. There are also careers called bioartists. Now, this is from Australia. The, uh, it's an indigenous piece of artwork. Uh, done based on images that you, the molecules that you see under a microscope. So again, a marriage of uh, biology and art. Uh, and these are uh, also people who can become entrepreneurs. Uh, you can be self-employed. Uh, you can have your own uh, museums. I look around the schools and you put some very fine artwork uh, displayed everywhere. Maybe take it to the next level. Look at some bio art which can be put up on the walls too. Um, Biofabrication, again, a lot of the textiles, India has a very rich heritage of textiles. And now uh, to reduce the uh, effluent treatments being um, flushed out, there are a process where um, uh, yarn and fibers are spun out of material like okay, material uh, like uh, mushrooms. We can go on to also look at um, um, you know how science and art combine in gastronomy and cuisine. Uh, this is called molecular cuisine. This is actually edible. We're using mixed reality and robotics and photography in medicine. Esports have already been introduced in the Asian Games. Permaculture is being mandated by law in many countries to solve the food security issues. And these are vertical farms in actually big cities. And you will find new innovations and applications of science across all the sectors, right from agriculture to uh, the weather, um, uh, logistics, and defense, which are all growing industries even in India. So you can open your mind to new possibilities. Transdisciplinary art, which includes music and video mapping and landscaping and multi-sensory museums are already being um, open 
in all of the world, including India. So, to conclude, what does that mean for, the, for you? How do you really connect the dots? There's a concept called Ikigai, which means first choose something that you love, something that excites you, something that you should you're all so good at, something that you can make a living from, that you get paid for, and something that you contribute to society. So if you can find this purpose, this sweet spot, then you're onto the right career path. And don't worry if things change or don't go your way because research says young people will have at least 70 different careers in your lifetime. So what you need to focus on is your skill sets, your values and your attitudes which you can apply across different careers and find your best fit to thrive in a world of complexity and change. So I'd like to end with uh, this visual, which is again from Australia, it's Aurora Australis. It's a fantastic display in the sky. Um, and uh, you know, your life is going to be wonderful and exciting like this. And if you haven't realized, your career journey has already started. So make the most use of it and all the best for an exciting, enchanting future.